Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. We'll be continuing our playthrough of Quantum in just a moment, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the different map layouts that you can use. In the game we've been playing, we're using the basic two-player map, but there's lots of other interesting configurations you can do as well. Join me at the table and I'll just show you a couple different ones. The layouts I'm going to show you are just a few of the suggested ones provided with the game, but of course you can always custom build your own as well. In this layout, both players start here and here, so you kind of have to meet in the middle before you either go your own ways or end up tangling along this thin, narrow line of planets. In this layout, one player starts here and the other one over here. So you might be thinking, well look, there's a lot of room here for us to place quantum cubes before we even have to worry about interacting with each other. And that's true up to a point, but the other difference with these layouts is not just the shape, but also the number of quantum cubes you start the game with. In the game Luke and I are playing, we each started with five quantum cubes. For this map layout, each player starts with seven. So you're really going to have to spread out quite a distance from your initial planet if you want to place all seven of those cubes. This also means you'll be collecting more cards, and that means further customization to your faction's powers and abilities, and what you'll actually be able to do within the game. Here's a three-player map where you start here, here, or here, and you begin with six quantum cubes. And then when you're ready to tangle with four players in a big game, each of you can collect seven quantum cubes and start in the corners and then go at it. Well, hopefully that gives you a sense of some of the variety in the box, but now it's time for me to set things up for Luke to join me so we can continue our playthrough of Quantum. 31 seconds and we're going for auto sequence start. All right, everyone, we're back, and we've been joined by... Luke Smith. That's right. Now, Luke, before we get started, I want to mention that I got a very nice email from Eric Zimmerman, the designer of Quantum, and he wanted me to let you know he thinks you're doing a fantastic job. Well, thank you, Eric. <laughs> yeah. And how does he think you're doing? Well, like I said, he thinks you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> and I think Luke's going to continue doing a great job because we got a fantastic suggestion from one of our viewers, Manesh. Cappy, I think that's how you say your last name. And although I can't pronounce your name exactly right, I think we will get your move exactly right. So join us at the table and let's find out what you want us to do. First, I'm going to use flexible to change a three into a four. Then I'm going to use its modify ability and turn this to a five. So how many actions have you spent so far, Luke? Zero. That's right, because flexible was a card ability and then modify was the ship ability. So, are you going to use an action now? Yes, actually I'm going to use two actions to get a quantum cube. A quantum cube has been constructed. Luke has one quantum cube left, and you have one action left. So what are you going to do for that? I'm going to use the transport and move one, two, and then drop. So what Manish was trying to do here was not just construct a quantum cube, but start preparing to be able to construct one here. And the five is Luke's most vulnerable ship, so he's tucked it in here, hopefully with the two in front to kind of protect it, which I thought was a great piece of strategy. So now in the advanced cards phase, because Luke placed a quantum cube, he's going to be able to collect a new card. And there were some different recommendations about which one he should take, and Red Claw 87 suggested taking... Expansion. That's right. Now this is going to allow Luke to collect one of his two unused ships, roll it, and then place it somewhere on the board in orbital position around one of his planets. Five. So the five is an interceptor. Where would you like to place that? I'll just place it back here. Yeah, you big chicken hiding it over there so I can't fight it. Well, that's probably a good decision. All right, so now we need to replace the card that was taken. And on top we have aggression. This says immediately add two to dominance. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this would be good for Luke, actually. If you had this one, if that had been your choice, the game would be yes. over. Tell him why the game would be over. Because I have four dominance, and when you reach six, yes. you get to place a cube anywhere. That's right, on any empty space. You don't have to worry about arranging your ships or anything like that. Thankfully, that card wasn't there for you to take. Uh, now it's my turn. I want to mention I had lots of helpful suggestions come to me as well. Uh, people were suggesting I give up, I quit the game, <laughs> I... Give a, pick up a new hobby. <laughs> There's a lot of very helpful suggestions I received. 
But let's go to the table and see if I can scrounge something out of this. Well, the Andromeda leader, Major Malfunction, has been staring at these star maps for some time, trying to find a way to win the game. And I'm not seeing a way to do it peacefully, so instead, we're going to have to turn to violence. Here's what I've come up with. I'm going to move my interceptor. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to use the free warp ability and switch places like this. Oh no. <laughs> you see what's coming, don't you, Luke? Now I have a slightly better advantage here because I'm using my three against the five. I'm going to use a move attack action and it's time to roll dice. So I get to roll the black die and Luke rolls the white one. Here we go. Oh, that's not too bad. I've got six. Luke? Oh, Luke's got ten. So this means I'm going to win the combat. Not quite yet. I'm going to use Cruel. Okay, Cruel forces me to re-roll my die. But even if I roll a six, I would still win. So in this case, I've at least hung on for one more turn. No! <laughs> okay, Luke, I'm afraid your ship has been destroyed. You're going to need to roll that. And then let's see. Oh my goodness, you destroyed your quantum cube. So Luke got a six there. My dominance is going up by one. Luke's is going down by one. Now I have the option of moving my destroyer into the space I was attacking or putting it back where it was. And I can't really see the advantage to either of these options at this point. I don't know exactly what Luke has planned, but I do know that his frigate can attack me in either of those spaces. So I will move it into the space that I was attacking. Maybe I can gum up this plan a little bit for Luke, make it a little harder for him to place a quantum cube here if that's what he's got planned. And then for my final action, I'm going to use the transport ability here, pick up this die, move two spaces, and then drop this one right here. Well, what do you know? Finally, major malfunction doesn't totally malfunction. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to be able to place a quantum cube, but I also didn't think I was going to be able to pull off a successful attack, at least not with the ships that I had on the, on the board. But then I found that way to warp. That gave me a, a fighting chance, and sure enough, it worked out. So sorry about that, Mr. Starbuck, but what next? Time for me to win. What do you mean? I have a plan. Oh dear, I know what that means. Now, I was a little bit worried at first, but now that I'm looking at the board, I can't see a direct way for you to win this game, Luke. So what is it you're actually thinking here? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use flexible to turn this into a three, wherever that is. Okay, there we go. Yes. Then I'm going to warp with the one, so that's no action so far, and right. attack for free. The battle station's free attack. Okay, so you're also going on the path of violence. I'll roll up my defense. Okay, I've got a two. That's pretty low, so I got five. I got a five, but I have cruel. Okay, you're gonna make me re-roll. Yes. So Luke's got a six going into this. Oh no. Yes. Okay. So that is going to destroy my ship. So I have to re-roll it here. And I'm gonna place this in my scrapyard. Now Luke, do you wanna move the battle station in here or leave it where it was? Oh, I'll just move in. Okay. Now Luke, your dominance goes up by your dominance goes up by, by one. one. I see. I think I know what you've got planned here. But you need to be able to pull off two more successful attacks. Where are these yes. coming from? So, so you did. You've taken no actions yeah, yet. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, what's the now? I'm going to deploy my six. Okay. There's one action. Then I'm going to move. That's two actions. Now this is attack. a this is a riskier attack for you. I know. Um, but with that cruel ability. Oh no, oh, come and my on. poor rolling. Here we go. Oh, One. wow. Okay, so that destroys my ship as well. I'll roll this up. Okay, another six goes into my scrapyard. I'll move in. Okay. Next. You have one action left. Now I'm going to go. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And don't forget, Luke's dominance went up again on that last successful attack. So his dominance is at five. If he wins this fight, his dominance goes Ooh. to six. Oh, I'm pretty oh, sure, yeah. I'm sure that sealed my fate right there. Yep. A one? That's like insult <laughs> to injury. You couldn't have rolled any better than that. My ship has been destroyed. Let's see what it becomes. Another six. I'm just rolling sixes <laughs> like crazy here. And my dominance goes to six. Yes, it does. And we know what that means. Once you hit six... You get to place a quantum cube. Anywhere you want. I'll place it here. And not just any quantum cube, your last quantum, quantum cube. cube. And that means you won the game. <laughs> I, I know Luke was a little disappointed there in that last round when I destroyed the ship you had around this planet. I'm like, there's no way to win. No, because you were going to use that ship, weren't yeah. you, to win the next turn. 
you found another way to do it. And I gotta say, I don't mind losing like that, especially since you, know, you weren't really using nonstop attacks the whole game. You were also using, you know, moving your ships around, getting them in the right places, and yes, attacking me on occasion. <laughs> yeah, I did not do so well. I still had two cubes left to go. I have three ships, three <laughs> scouts sitting in my scrapyard here. Well, I, I have to say, once again, Congratulations, Mr. Starbuck. Well done. And I want to thank all of you guys for participating in this, sharing some great ideas with Luke. I certainly had an uphill battle against him and all of you combined. Maybe in the next series I'll do a little better? <laughs> Don't no. hold your breath. No. <laughs> but until the next time, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.